I did mine on intervertebral disc disease, which is also commonly known as IVDD or slip disc, essentially. And I did this because my dog also was diagnosed with it, like when he was four, I think. And this is my dog. <laughs> Common breeds that are afflicted are the Dachshund, Shizu, Pekingese, Basset Hound, and Beagle. And my dog's a Shih Tzu, so he's predisposed to it genetically. Um, so intervertebral discs are structures between bones of the spinal column, aka vertebrae, and they allow for motor function of the spine and absorb shock. They contain a nucleus pulposus, the soft center, and an annulus fi fibrosus, external fibrous portion. And when a disc herniates or slips, their nucleus pulposus will extrude dorsally from the annulus fibrosus and can hit against the spinal cord and or compress it. And with these pictures here, that's a normal disc. In this one, you can see that, the, that it is herniated and is compressing. And common <coughs> symptoms are the dog not wanting to jump, lameness or pain and weakness in hind legs. And the dog will often cry out in pain. Sometimes it will also give anxiety and muscle spasms. And they'll also have a hunched back or tense neck muscles because my dog also kind of has a hunched back and you can see where his disc was slipped. And they'll have a lack of appetite and often loss of bladder and or bowel control. And my dog also has loss of bladder and bowel control. <laughs> and for type one causes our outer layer of discs calcifying in the neck region and discs breaking down from impact like jumping. Um, in type two, discs harden and turn fibrous over a longer period. Discs will break down, bulge out, and then compress the spinal cord, and this will prevent nerve impulses. I'm pretty sure my dog had type one because he got it from jumping up on things. And this is a normal one. This one here you can see that is gone into the spinal cord and for type 2 the outer part of the disc will bulge and enter the spinal cord space. To diagnose it, it you can do a neurological examination. This will help determine if it is IVD or a similar disease like spinal tumors or trauma and so on. And then you can do spinal radiographs which is screening for disc infections or bony tumors and can show narrow disc or calcification. You can also do a myelography, which injects contrast around the spinal cord to see it. And then it's typically an older technique that isn't used much anymore. And then you can do a CT scan to visualize an area. And then the MRI, which is typically the best test to use and can visualize soft tissue, which includes the nervous system. And to treat it, you can do a conservative treatment, which is steroids and anti-inflammatories to reduce swelling of cord and reduce pain. And then you can find a crate for up to six weeks. For emergency treatment, you, they'll usually remove a piece of bony vertebrae over spinal cord, which is a laminectomy. And this is used if it's too severe or paralysis occurs. And not all dogs will recover fully from this. And for muscle spasms, it can, you can treat that with heat and massaging and mu muscle relaxants like di diazepam and methocarbamol. My dog had the surgery, but he recovered pretty well. And for post-op management, there are mild, mild or to moderate cases tend to get feeling back in their legs and can walk again. Better, there's a better chance of recovery if we're operated on soon after the diagnosis. And some can have subsequent cases of IVDD if discs burst later in life, meaning they'll get more than one. Some will need wheels to support, which is this picture here. Um, and exercise helps to keep muscles strong. 
So it's like just walking the dog can help them recover some of that. And to prevent it, uh, usually you should prevent extreme weight gain, which reduces, if there's too much weight gain, it will reduce stress on the spine. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it reduces stress on spine, the spine and neck if there's not too much weight gain. Um, walking with a harness can also help, and this reduces stress on the neck, especially if the dog pulls on a leash. A quality diet also helps. And usually you should put steps or ramps out for the dog to get up on furniture if it's predis if it has a predisposition to this. And like most diseases, if it if the dog has it and it's genetic, then you probably shouldn't breed them. <laughs> and for dietary studies, they say that a body condition scoring of four to five out of nine is what you should maintain for the dog. And there are nutritional supplements that can maintain cartilage health that can also help, like glucosamine and chondroitin, or whatever, chondroitin, <laughs> dachshunds, and chondrodystrophic dogs like beagles, shih tzu, pekinese, and corgis should eat a diet moderate in fat and carbohydrates and relatively high protein which allows for a dog to gain more muscle mass while lowering ri the risk of obesity. And lower BCS was correlated with faster recovery after the back surgery, which is a hemolaminectomy. Recovery in this case was dogs walking without any assistance. Those are my sources. <laughs> are you ready for questions? Yeah. <laughs> questions, comments? There's one back here. Yeah, you're great. My dog also, um, this is my senior year of high school. He also had an IBD. He had to get some surgery. Luckily, he made a full recovery, but like the after recovery, we had to like basically like swing and walk him, like try and help him. Like, and what breed of dog was that? He's a cocker spaniel. A cocker spaniel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like almost anything. You can have a slight case of it. More, 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 really bad. Yeah. I think yours is like pretty bad. Yeah, I like your idea of having ramps or steps, and what you should do is train the dog to do ramps and steps when they're puppies, and then for their whole life they're used to that rather than when they get sick or something, because then they don't learn as well. So I'm really, I always love ramps and steps, always use them, even on the border collar. I don't want them jumping too far yeah. down. Or my, up. Yeah, my dog. We actually have a ramp now on the back porch, but okay. usually when I'm when they're upstairs, I'll just like pick them up because he can't go downstairs. Mm -hmm. He's going up the stairs before and I'm like, I don't know how he does that. <laughs> yeah, ramps are good. So I don't know if it's very common, but with one of my dogs, this happened two different times in two different locations in the walk. <clears throat> I have a dachshund, <clears throat> and then. Fortunately, we didn't have to get the surgery either time. Um, she'd become completely paralyzed at one point, but through like therapy, um, anti-inflammatories and pain medicine and confinement, um, she has completely gained like all of her mobility back. Um, they had to put her on special food um, so that she would lose weight. Um, but she's fine now, and I'm just hoping there's not a third incident. Right, yeah. Because body weight is very important to be average or even a little on the thin side rather than all that other weight. Oh, yeah, so if she's hypothyroid, yeah. the weight is a problem. Yeah, my, mine um, only had the one, but it was like an emergency, so he had to do the water treadmill and everything. <laughs> um, our third presenter, where are you? McKenzie, is it? McKenna. McKenna. Yeah. Are you, are you is, is it going to do it in 10 minutes or do you want to wait? It's your call. What's your topic? 